If you've spent any time at all here on the channel, you know how passionate I am about the idea of thinking photographically, about carrying the concepts and ideas and methods of cinematography into the way that we color grade. I feel like all too often we think photographically, we design shots, we capture shots in filmmaking, and then we get into the post-production process, the color grading process for those images, and we discard the ideas of cinematography and photography and swap them in for an entirely alien set of tools and uh, language. And I really feel like that comes at the detriment of what we're trying to accomplish for our images. So huge believer in carrying the ideas of photography all the way through the color grading process, which is why I'm super excited about our topic today. We're talking about exposure and in particular, what we might call overexposure or underexposure, but what to me is really a simple matter of how do I move exposure as a colorist? How do I navigate exposures where they come in to my color grading environment versus where I want to see them go? And what do I do when there's a larger gap there as sometimes happens? So again, you might traditionally call that over or underexposure, but I wanna emphasize as we begin this conversation about exposure that there is no such thing as over or under exposure. Exposure is an expressive tool. Just because an image feels more airy or open or bright, that does not mean that it's overexposed. And just because an image feels more moody or murky or you have to kind of lean forward to make out the details, that does not mean that it's underexposed. That's simply a matter of creative intent. The only over or under exposure is an exposure that does not yet agree with the creative stakeholders intent for that shot. That's what we're going to focus on today. But that said, there are plenty of instances where we need to be able to move exposure. I want to share some of the ideas and techniques uh, that I use for this here inside of Resolve. Before we dive into Resolve, if you haven't been hanging out here on the channel for a while, welcome. Super glad you're here. We love color grading here on the channel. It's all we talk about. We do two videos a week. We do a live session on Fridays where we go into more depth on what we covered in that uh, in the prior two videos for that week. So uh, really glad you're here. Make sure that you subscribe and hit your notifications if you like this kind of content, if you want to stay up to date on all the cool stuff that we're doing here on the channel. Let's dive into Resolve and talk about exposure. So. I've got a couple shots lined up here that are easy examples of shots where we might indeed want to move the exposure. And this first one is a great example where we might look at it and say, hey, I want to bring that in a little bit. It feels a little bit overexposed to me. And before I dive in and start working on my exposures, I just want to point out the foundation that I'm resting on. It's the same foundation that I'm always resting on when I begin a color grade. First of all, I've set up my overall color management, which means I'm using good color science to take me from what my camera saw into what my display can reproduce. And I've done that for all of the clips here in this timeline. If you're not familiar with color management, lots of great content here on the channel on that subject, make sure you check it out because we're resting on that foundation already. The only other thing that I've done thus far is you can see in all of these shots, I have a template node graph in place. So there's nothing currently happening in these nodes, but it gives me a structure to operate within as I move into each shot and start to make adjustments within them, all right? So with that said, let's go back over here to shot number one and do something that is honestly the first thing that I do on almost any image that I grade, regardless of whether I feel like exposure needs to move a lot or a little or not at all. I just want to see what's in there. I just want to see what's in the negative. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to grab my offset. I'm going to be in my exposure node. And in this case, because we're a little more on the open side, I'm going to see what's in that high end by swinging over to the left here. And I'm going to go way further than I really would in a color grade. I just want to see what's in there. You can see where the, what I would call pinned highlights are by going far enough over to the left. You're like, all right, those highlights are not recovering detail. They're just sort of like flat white things that are getting darker as I spin the wheel. So those are what I would call pinned highlights. And what I want to do here is look at what we would do if we felt like, okay, I want to get more of like a normal exposure, a little bit less of an airy blown out exposure like we're seeing here. I would say you can go about as far as this and past that, you're going to start to do something that I talk about a lot here on the channel, which is devising a solution, which is worse than the problem that it is meant to solve. So much past here. Okay, sure. You're getting to like a more quote unquote, normal middle gray exposure on our subject down in the bottom of the frame. But the solution is actually worse than the problem because you've got all that pinned highlight and strangeness happening up in the high end. Here's the other thing that is really easy to forget with overexposure and color grading in general. Don't forget to press play. Okay. Cause the shot evolves 
look how much the shot evolves. And you want to make sure before you start swinging your exposures all around that you're not misinterpreting the intent of the photographer. In this case, I would argue this is a shot that is designed to evolve. When this flare goes away, that exposure, I really like how that feels. Again, we could argue all day, oh, I want this to be a little moodier or a little more open, but I actually feel like this falls into a really great sweet spot and depriving a shot of its ability to evolve is something we really want to avoid as colorists. So this is a case where as this shot evolves, I'm actually pretty good with letting it open up hotter there and evolve into the sweet spot where it does. But if we did want to optimize a little bit, maybe we go to like somewhere like that. We're not yet revealing any of those egregious uh, pinned highlights yet. And if we play through it, I think it's going to evolve out pretty nicely. Even that was too much. Let's go back a little bit. There we go. I'm also going to go to my ratio node and reduce my contrast a little bit. Just using my contrast pivot, which are my tools of choice for contrast ratio, which is what the ratio node is dedicated to. Like that feels great. If I wanted to get fancy and keyframe that, I can and, and do like an iris pull or something like that. But honestly, I really like watching shots evolve and fall into a sweet spot like that. So make sure that you're not doing work that isn't necessary or that's running counter to something that could be really lovely, which is a shot that evolves and kind of falls into a sweet spot there. Last thing I'll mention on this shot, even with a little bit of exposure trim that I've done here, something that's standing out to me is that these highlights feel extra clipped because there's this hard edge between saturated stuff and very unsaturated stuff. So something that I will often do in that case is go to my loom versus sat curves, grab the rightmost control point here, and just dip that down a little bit. It doesn't have to be anything crazy, like a 0.8 is plenty. That's gonna have a pretty minimal effect on your subject and on things like her lipstick. It's just going to smooth out that transition between very high exposure and truly clipped values there at the top of the container, okay? Let's move on to shot number two and talk about another form of the problem. So here's a shot that we've all had to deal with. We've all had to deal with shooting for those of us who are uh, you know, on the production side in any capacity. There's not much you're gonna do to improve this exposure except to wait, right? If you got four hours, it's gonna get better when the sun starts to fall. But right now, honestly, the exposure is pretty well optimized for the subject. So what are we gonna do here? Well, again, exposure node, first thing I'm gonna do, let's just grab the wheel, see what's in there. Nothing. There is nothing in there. Whether that's because the sky is clipped or whether that's because there is not much going on in the sky, it's hard to tell exactly. But regardless, I'm not going to be able to bring that sky in and get a bunch more detail out of it if I drive it down hard enough. So that tells me I need to adjust my expectations and do what I can, again, without devising a solution that is worse than the problem that it's meant to solve. Okay. So exposure, I actually feel like that exposure is pretty well nailed. I'm going to go to my ratio node maybe soften out my contrast a little bit, like so. Let's go to the balance node and we're gonna warm things up a little bit. Again, I'm using offset for that, like so. And here's what I'm gonna do about the sky. Again, we've kind of seen, for better or for worse, there's just nothing that we're really gonna dig out of that. But one thing that we can do, especially if we're sneaky about it, is we're gonna do a grad, essentially. I'm doing a circular power window, setting my aspect to 100 so it turns into a horizontal grad. We're gonna tilt up. I'm gonna go super, super soft. I'm gonna turn my window preview off so that I'm not seeing uh, that window outline and I can just focus on what it's actually doing. I'm gonna gain down ever so slightly and just start to nudge things toward blue ever so slightly. And this is all about being sneaky. Like it's so easy to go too far and have it look crazy, but if you do it just a little bit, I'm gonna tilt that window even a little bit further up. If you do it just a little bit, it can give you a, a nice, subtle uh, feeling that maybe there's a little bit going on up in the sky, a little bit of shape up there. One thing that you can do on uh, a situation like this is if you go to your qualifier, just go to your luminance, and I'm gonna sweep the low range of the luminance. If I turn on my highlight mode here, I'm just gonna sweep that low end so that the little vegetation there and that like you know telephone pole or whatever we're looking at is being left out of the bargain. Go nice and soft there. Turn that highlight mode off. And now you can see that's kind of tucking in even more. And that's feeling really good to me. I'm gonna go over to my balance here. And I'm gonna try actually doing a little bit of gamma in my balance as well, just because I feel like I've moved my highlights as far as I need to. Again, just little tiny nudges, trying to warm things up a little bit and sort of 
credibly sell the idea of a sunlit day as best I can. So if we look at our before and after, we're not magically relighting the shot. That's kind of beyond our domain as colorists, but we're making things a lot better and it doesn't look like we've like overly stepped on uh, or overtly manipulated the image. If we go full screen, there's your before, there's your after. That's a great start. So that's how I deal with situations like that where we just need to be realistic with ourselves about what we are going to be able to do versus what we're really not gonna be able to accomplish. Let's look at uh, another example here. This shot is gonna be similar. We really just need to limit our exposure adjustment based on the fact that, again, if I spin my wheel to the left, those highlights are pinned on the snow. That's really not a problem until I make it a problem. So as long as I don't pull the exposure wildly too far in from what the negative will allow, that's totally fine. You can bring the exposure in a little bit if you like so that those highlights aren't quite so hot. Maybe go to the ratio node, pull back on some contrast, not that far. And then I'm gonna kind of favor my pivot toward the floor so I'm affecting more of the high end so the pivot's getting lower, that is. Maybe I don't need that much of it, just a little pinch. Maybe add a little bit of saturation down in the lower segment of the node tree to compensate for that saturation that we lost with our contrast. That's feeling really good. This is a shot that, you know, like sometimes our awareness of clipped highlights can be worse than actually what we're seeing. Only other thing that we might wanna do here is after the saturation node, Let's steal what we did in shot number one, do this loom versus sat thing. I'm just going over here, tapping this node, hitting command C, gonna go to shot number three again, tap node six, hit command V. And I was just noticing as the shot evolved a moment ago, kind of what was happening up in the highlights there again in the edge between like colorful highlights versus fully uh, kind of bleached out highlights. This just helps kind of like homogenize those two zones together. So that's a great start there. And to round things out, I just want to look at the other end of the spectrum on a couple shots. Let's look at, you know, quote unquote, underexposure or exposures, again, where we want to move things more open. We want to open them up a little bit and do what we can. We've got a couple of uh, interesting shots that we can look at here, but I'm going to focus in on this one. And again, in this case, because I know ultimately I'm going to end up doing some amount of exposure opening. I just don't know how much. Instead of spinning my offset to the left, I'm going to spin it to the right and just see what's in there. And just start by going way, way, way too far. I'm like, okay, cool. So there's, we're definitely seeing the noise floor in, you know, like the subject's beard and stuff. Like that's what's in there. And again, this is not like my first crack at grading. I just want to see what's in the camera negative. So with that in mind, that's going to help me guide my adjustments and say like, all right, that's probably plenty for opening the exposure. I'm going to go to my ratio node, soften out my contrast maybe a little bit. Oh wait, I'm doing that on the wrong node. Let's go up here, ratio, soften that out. Let's go down to the lower section of our node graph and add a little bit of sat to compensate for the loss of sat uh, from dropping our contrast. This is an instance where because we're opening up and we've got a little bit of noise, I'm gonna hit it with just a little bit of noise reduction. Nothing crazy. I like spatial noise reduction over temporal noise reduction. We have a whole video on noise reduction if you wanna go deeper on this. And we did a grade school episode where we talked about it for like an hour. It was a good one. Uh, for now, I'm just going to do some shorthand here and drop that in. Not trying to obliterate the noise, just trying to remedy it somewhat. And so again, this is you know like a, a theme that is kind of emerging of when we have a gap between where we are and where we want to go, we want to have two things in mind. We want to know where we want to go, but we need to let the image guide us because the truth is we can't take image A and guide it toward any arbitrary point on the map. All images have places they can go and places they really can't go. And if we try to take the, our image in a place that it, can, can't, that it can't go, we're not gonna succeed in our, our color grade. So we wanna be sensitive not only to what we want, but to what the image can really accommodate. So I feel like this shot where we're like, all right, I wanna see a little bit more. This is a good example of uh, doing what we can for uh, opening up the exposure a little bit. And I think it's, again, worth emphasizing like, we don't need to get this somehow back to a level position so that we have a quote unquote correct or good exposure. If we wanna move things more open, we can up to the limits of what the shot will allow, but it's not about like correcting the shot or getting it to some sort of like arbitrary ideal. And what I'm doing right now as I'm talking is I've actually backed off on my offset even further. I think with a second look, that feels really good and it's nice and clean, nice and organic. It's supportive of the design of the original shot, 
we're just seeing a little bit more into the original image. So I hope that's some useful principles for you guys about how I think about moving exposure from point A to point B. And that's really a good theme to uh, put on moving exposures that uh, I mentioned a moment ago, where it's on one side about, okay, where are we and where do we wanna be? And on the other side about, all right, let's start moving that way and letting the footage tell us how it likes that and letting the footage tell us whether it's gonna let us go all the way, halfway, or a little bit of the way, and finding that negotiation, finding that compromise with what the material is and what it will allow and what we see for it, and candidly reminding the people that we're working with or reminding ourselves if we shot the material, we don't need to rewrite the image. There's something strong, something beautiful about any image that we shoot, and ultimately we wanna lean into that as opposed to trying to get it to an arbitrary point that we've decided is going to be best for the material. So that's a good initial discussion on exposure. We could talk about exposure a lot. I hope we get to talk about it uh, in our grade school live session in a longer format because honestly, there's a ton to think about when it comes to designing and shooting and then ultimately finessing exposures. It's a big subject in a way, it's the fundamental consideration of filmmaking. So it would be hard to over discuss it, but this is a great start to the conversation here today and I hope you enjoyed it. If so, make sure that you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you turn on your notifications so that you can be in the loop on videos like this, on our live session that we do on Friday mornings, all the cool stuff that we have going on here on the channel about color grading.